as a former offensive lineman, I can sympathize with what Brett Maher is going through right now. He's in a situation where when he does his job correctly, nobody really cares. But when he fails to do his job, everybody wants to push him off the bridge. Um, so with that, it comes Cowboy fan outrage. You know, I like to dig a little deeper to see if this outrage is warranted. I must admit. I get a little pissed off at Brett Maher as well, but I like to put my rational thinking cap on so I can figure out the full situation. So with that, I did a little research on Brett, his numbers, his peers, and, you know, trying to see if we can get a little better. Can we improve from Brett? Um, you know, are we are we worse off with him? Is there anybody we can get to replace him? Uh, let's take a look. First thing I did was I pulled up Brett Maher's stats, and last year he was 29 for 36, which ended up being 80%. Now... Looking at the number, 29 of 36, okay, he only missed seven kicks. You know, out of uh, out of 16, 18 games, you know, only only missing seven kicks. That can't be terrible, right? When you look at 80%, you know, we, we look at what we want an ideal situation of a kicker to be. We want, we just coming off of that, that drug called Dan Bailey, that, that, that one drug that doesn't miss, that one drug that has us in the 90s. So we see Cowboy fans nowadays saying, yo, we might be better off going with dan bailey but dan bailey isn't doing that much uh that much better than than brett maher he's he's, he's actually worse he's he's a he's a 75 percent now he missed seven kicks as well but it's all about the percentage maybe if uh if dan bailey kicked more kicks he would miss more kicks right plus if you google dan bailey right now i want everybody to do it just google dan bailey the first thing you're gonna see is dan bailey had a rough day of practice it's just interesting that um brett actually beat this man in camp head up but everybody wants to bring dan bailey back i got a couple more dan bailey points but let's move on and take a look at this i even saw some people say cody parkey he's a he's a free agent what about him can we sign cody parkey in case you ain't know, Cody Parkey was the kicker for the Bears that missed four kicks in the game versus the Lions, and I think three of those were off the uprights. Then he continued to miss another kick in the playoffs, which was very important, versus the Eagles, and that kick went off the uprights, and I think uh, Bears fans successfully ran him out of town. Two other names that I've been seeing are Sebastian Janikowski and Matt Bryant, two kickers that can kick. However, I think they're older and they just don't want to kick anymore. Matt, Matt Bryant's been a free agent for a while. I think if he wanted to kick, he would be with the team and i think jenikowski would rather play left tackle these days and he might be another guy that just doesn't want to sign with a uh with a team so that's two less options that we have there so i wanted to take a look at a few stats i pulled up all the kicking numbers for the 32 kickers in the national football league in an attempt to find brett maher and i labeled that thing by percentage this is regular field goal percentage right here total field goal percentage and what i saw was brett maher was ranked 25th at 80 percent now it's crazy you can go 29 for 36 which ain't terrible and you can go 80.6%, which is passing the test. And you can still be 25. Uh, what that says to me is that all the good kickers in the league are taken. You know, that's that's kind of like uh, that's kind of like O line stuff, right? When we talk about top tier offensive linemen, there's top tier, and then there are, there are the guys that can play that you wish would be better, but they can play, and then everybody else is just kind of trash. Brett Maher is he's he's 25th, but 29 for 36 ain't the worst thing in the world. Um, let's take a look at what his extra point percentage was, which is different. There's extra points and then there's field goals. And I take a look at it and Brett Maher is top 10 as an extra extra point guy, which is interesting again that 32 of 33 can get you ranked number nine. You know what I mean? It doesn't give you a lot of room to miss field goals when we're talking about the best kickers in the game. So if you get, what's the percentage? 97. If you get 97% in extra points, you get 80% field goals, then you just kind of got to work on fixing the field goals and just keep your kicker, right? So what I did then, I went back to field goals and I went back way the hell down to 25. And I wanted to break it down. Let me move my remote out the way um here we go brett maher i want to look exactly what he's missing so kickers don't kick a lot from uh from the you know 20 or whatever but 20 to 29 he was perfect cool 30 to 39 he missed two out of uh two out of eight cool i'll give you that seven of 11 from 40 to 49 
that's really where he gets most of those misses from, right? And um, then we all know uh, that he's uh, that he's not that terrible from uh, from a plus fifty. He can actually hit a hit a damn sixty two yard. I might show a clip of that later. But it's interesting if you look at his numbers in this way and just say, okay, how can we clean up? the ones that he's missing. How can we clean up the 40 from 49? There's a couple ways to look at it. Yeah, it's could either punt right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could either punt right there or uh or just go for it. You know what I mean? If you but if you take away these handful of misses that he has in a 40 to 49, then Brett Maher is a, a much better kicker, missing one here and missing two there. So that's what we got to work on. And, and listen, man, I know somebody in the chat box is going to get ignorant. They're going to watch half the video. They're not going to listen to the whole message. They're going to say, yo, Vach defending Brett Maher. I'm not defending Brett Maher because he needs to make those kicks. This is just another situation of, okay, cool. How the hell would you fix this? You know what I mean? And this was my final idea that I came up with. Why are we saving Brett Maher? Why are we holding on to Brett Maher? Well, if kicking as a whole in terms of, hey, I can't find free agent kickers, you can find free agent running backs or free agent one text. If I can't find free agent kickers and a kicker I got missed seven kicks last year out of 30, whatever it was, 31, 31 kicks, I missed seven of them. And I could possibly get better than that next year. And he's only making a little bit over half a million dollars. I can't beat that. The only reason we cut uh, we cut uh, Dan Bailey because he was making like what three million. So we go from three million to a little bit over half, and we get better kicking than what we would have gotten from Dan Bailey. I think that just kind of makes a little bit of sense. Something else I did. One last thing that I'm gonna let y'all go. I took a look at the free agent numbers. I ain't know this, but Dan, we can't even sign Dan Bailey because because the because the Vikings then didn't sign him back. And like I said, if you type in Dan Bailey, the first thing you're gonna see is Dan Bailey had a rough day of practice, which is hilarious. Um, these were the free agents last year. Um, the Patriots locked in their guy. Um, the Jets went to go get Catwoman, and um, these are the rest of the free agents that you're stuck with. You got your 40 year olds. You got whack ass Cody Parkey, uh, Santos. I don't even know Santos. Um, old ass Nugent, who's just as good, at, good or bad as um, as Maher would be. And then you just kind of got uh, got the rest of the guys there. Y'all gonna bring in Kai Forbath and see what he does? I think. Uh, this is a situation where you would like to be better at kicker. You would want to be better at kicker. I just don't think there's anything we can do this year to get better at kicker. We just got to take breast experience points and put them all in awareness and accuracy and hope his overall goes up. All right. I didn't want to hold y'all too long, man. Just wanted to put a little bit of research. Some Something I, I, I do think is interesting. If y'all are listening to me at this point, Everybody keep an eye on the uh, on the uh, comment section and watch all these angry Brett Maher people come to the comments and be like, Vach, why are you defending Brett Maher? Brett Maher is trash. I'm not. <laughs> what the hell else you want us to do? Uh, I'm going to roll all these little ads or whatever. Shouts out to the Patreon, the merch gang, and the uh, uh, affordablesticks.com. Salute to them. Go get you a fire stick. Until then, peace, y'all. My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.